sit different once the camera's rolling. Sorry. <laughs> Welcome to All Things Internet, a show where we talk about things we see on the internet that usually have to do with the internet, and Emily tries her gosh darnness to fact check and research things she finds relevant. Here in between us is Snoop getting his ears scratched, so he looks like he's nuzzling in Emily's private areas. And then next to him <laughs> is, oh, now he's getting Noop nibbles. Noop. <laughs> he's relaxed. Snoop is my, one of my dogs uh, that I got from a shelter when he was about two-ish, three-ish. And he still to this day doesn't quite understand cuddles. He gets really excited about them and then starts nibbling on us. So mm. he's, he's our guest on the couch today, but let's see how long he lasts. And then Emily's hair now looks like Snoop. Her leg. Emily's <laughs> hair now looks like Snoop. I'm, it's the morning. Yep. Emily's making a record in the morning. Emily, introduce yourself. Oh, my God, he's squishing me. Oh, my God, Snoop, relax. Uh, you got to say, hi, I'm Rachel Ballinger. I'm Rachel Ballinger. And I'm Emily Brostaff. And that's the end of it. I've done yeah. it. You made me wake up early. <laughs> I did. <laughs> go, go. How are you doing? Oh, thank you so much for asking. <laughs> I'm actually doing really well this morning. Oh. Yeah. How about you? Um, great. I know that neither of us slept last night, though. No. Three so hours. driving. How many did you get? I don't know. I refuse to look at the clock. Really? Yeah. Hmm. I like to know how much I'm suffering. <laughs> <laughs> I've mm. noticed that when you do that, you and it's harder to fall asleep. So I would. I took me forever to fall asleep, and then once I fell asleep, I just kept waking up. Mm. I've been having weird dreams the past few nights, and I don't like it. Any that are worthy of sharing? Um, no, because I don't want to put them out into the universe. Okay, I feel that. A lot of just like negativity, and Ooh. I don't want it. Okay. I don't want it. No, no one wants that. No. No. <laughs> I was going to just start sharing, and I realized, no, I said no. I'm not going to do it. No means no. No means no, Ballinger. All right, Snoop. Look at him. He's being so precious. I think he calmed down. Yeah. Good for you, buddy. All right, Em. All right, we got lots. A lot happened this week. Okay. We got a lots lot of A lot happened this week. We yeah. are going to be recording on Friday, so if there's any updates, we will do them over the weekend before we post Monday, but Em, go for it. All right, we're going to start with quick news. So um, Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively just quote unquote announced that they are pregnant with their fourth child. So Blake showed up to the Forbes Power Women's Summit red carpet event and um, she was sporting a beautiful baby bump and the sex of the child has not yet been confirmed. And that's that for that. Yay. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Speaking of babies. Oh, what a good segue. I have no idea what's next. (laughs) Trisha Paytas gave birth to their <gasps> child. I did not know that they did. Yep. On the 14th. Okay. Uh, they named their baby girl Malibu Barbie Paytas Hackman. I mean, Malibu as a first name, that's not bad. I mean, like people name their kids like Brooklyn and like other that's true. city names. So like. Yeah. Mal- Omaha. Yeah. Well, what? <laughs> no. I just made that up. No. No. Um, unless your name is Omaha and then it's valid. Um, San Francisco. <laughs> I mean, you've heard of Dallas. I've heard of Dallas. I've heard of Brooklyn. Los Angeles. <laughs> you know, just, uh, just get it done. San Diego. Yeah. Farm in San Diego. <laughs> I can't. Tallahassee, you get over here right now. <laughs> hey, Austin is a name. Austin, Austin is a Texas. Name. Yeah. So like, you know, it's not uncommon. I just, no. I've never heard the name Malibu before, but did we expect anything less? If it was just Malibu, I wouldn't think anything of it. Yeah, this is true. It, it's all together. If it was yeah. just Malibu, I'd be like. Okay, kind of unique. Love yeah. It. But the, the fact that the Barbie's in there, I'm like, what? I don't know why my brain can't compute. This is me having a small-minded brain. Continue. Um, okay. And then JoJo Siwa and Avery Cyrus officially confirmed their relationship on what? TikTok. Oh, no. I didn't know that at all. Huh? This is news to me. Wow. Wow. Gee willikers. <laughs> um, <laughs> so bad. All right. Now for the bigger stuff. Finally. Finally. I've been waiting. <laughs> um, on Thursday. Hit me with it. Okay. Anyway. On action. <laughs> this is what you do to me when I film, and I'm just showing you how annoying it is. Take one. Wait. And begin. The camera's not right. <laughs> okay. I haven't turned the camera on. <laughs> 
Um, on Thursday, Cardi B pled guilty to two misdemeanor charges. What? I have, I literally have not been on the internet apparently this week. Okay, I just saw a glitch. It was like you know when you go on BuzzFeed trending, it like numbers them on how yeah. trending something is. It was like twenty seventh. I had to Girl, scroll. How did she get away with that? Okay, so I know it's because so much other stuff is happening. I need to know what it was. What, yeah, what was she charged for? So um, she pled guilty to third degree assault and <gasps> a charge of a reckless endangerment in the second degree after getting into an altercation at a club in New York City back in 2018. Oh, so this was a while ago. That's why no one cares. Yeah. So she was involved in a fight in an at an Angels strip club in Queens. Mm. Um, yes. And the, the it makes sense. Um, two sisters who worked at the club said that Cardi B and her team attacked them because cool. Cardi B and her team thought that these sisters or one of the sisters was sleeping with Offset, which is her husband now. All right, don't attack her. Don't yeah. attack anyone. Stop being with Offset. That's the solution here. There we go. All righty then. Appar- I do not condone any of Cardi B's actions in this. No. Nah. At all. No. Nah. Apparently they threw bottles and chairs at the sisters. What the yeah, so after accepting the plea deal, she gave a quote saying, part of growing up and maturing is being accountable for your actions. And then she tweeted a selfie uh, showing her court look, adding the caption, per. So, <laughs> taking a selfie showing her court look. You wrote that knowing that that was funny. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, she will not serve jail time under the plea and has instead been sentenced to, are you ready for this? It's he- I'm as ready as I'm ever going to be. It's hefty. 15 days of community service. How is she going to survive? I don't know. That but is such a detriment to her she's, lifestyle. She's in my thoughts and prayers. So God, two weeks and a day and a day. Some rough sentencing. Does she have to pay the sisters any money? I feel like they could just sue her instead. I think. I, I mean, I didn't see anything in the article about her paying money, but I think they could sue her for damages or like lost wages or yeah trauma trauma you know? yeah yeah i just didn't see anything about it okay um all you right did not fact check can research that well i didn't know that was something that needed to be fact checked and researched you need to know in my brain <laughs> what i'm gonna ask I know. before you even tell me the story the comments are always like they're starting to because wow my gum almost fell out of my mouth stop having gum in your mouth all the time what anyway <laughs> um um because we've gotten a little more interactive on this show, like like a little more back and forth and like a little more questioning on the show, the comments recently have been like, how dare Emily not fact check and research? How am I supposed to know that you're going to ask this question? How am I supposed to know? She could be like, so the astronauts landed in the moon. I could be like, how much does the moon weigh? And, you're like, and I'm like, oh, I don't this? know. And the comments will be like, how dare you not fact check? Okay, Susan, let's take a breather. Good Lord. Whatever she is giving the story of, those words that she says are fact-checked and researched. Yeah. Anything that comes from my end is just off the wall, <laughs> my weird brain doing what it wants. If we're just having a discussion, we're having a discussion. Yes, discussions, you don't know facts. That's you, usually you look them up after. Everyone was so mad at me last week. Because you didn't know every single aspect of, of the, the royal, royal family. family. So uh, let me just go ahead and correct <laughs> Camilla will not be the queen. She will be the queen consort. How did you not know that already? Emily? How dare I? How dare you? Oh and over, I'm over here being like, I don't know what a synod is. And everyone's like, oh, Rachel. Oh, oh, Rachel. You're like, I don't know who the president is. Oh, Ballinger. You silly goose. I'm like, I don't know the exact distance between here and Pluto and the temperature of Saturn. Emily, you idiot. I get applauded because I'm like, I know the difference between a country and continent. Oh, a round of applause. Rachel, round of good job, baby. <laughs> See, this is I set my knowledge bar real low. Yeah, God. <laughs> real low. So if I have any sort of knowledge, everyone's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Congratulations. Look at her go. I play the system well. <sighs> I need to start doing that. No, I need you to actually have <laughs> things so I don't get canceled. All right, fine, fine, fine. Um, okay, moving on to Britney Spears. She done messed up this week. Um, again? Again. Uh, Whitney. Yeah. Oops, she gone to it and did it again. She How gone. many times I want to use that right, joke? Right, right. Um, she posted a meme on Instagram that said, so this meme was a picture of words, and the picture said, I found there's only one way to look thin. Hang out with fat people. I saw that and went, no. I oh. thought it was a joke. Like, no. I, I, I literally thought it was like a fake account. 
Yeah, I saw that and went, that's no, no, no. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah. So she posted it with the caption, I wish I could have chosen the nannies for my children, my dancers. I mean, if I had Christina Aguilera's dancers, I would have looked extremely small. I mean, why not talk about it? Don't you think my confidence would have been a bit better if I could choose where I lived, ate, who I called on the phone, dated, and who was on stage with me? It's hard sometimes now. I see so much of my womanhood was stripped away at the time, and every person sat back and didn't say anything. Anyways, I'll be here talking about things people never talked about. So So she just called Christina Aguilera's dancers fat? Yes, she did. Uh, And? Yep. uh, And then, okay. Yeah. Oh. Yep. All right. So obviously, this, well, a lot of wrong on that one. Just there's a lot of wrong on that. Not that there's anything wrong with being fat, but she's using it as an insult. Exactly. If there's nothing wrong with ha- like just any well, your body's what your body is, and that's what you want, and that's it. And d- everything beautiful. Not against right. fat people here. I am against using it as a negative thing. A negative connotation, being like, I wish I had these, you know, plus size women, which I. I looked at Christina Aguilera's dancers. I was going to say, I've never noticed anything. Nope. Um, but she's saying basically if I'd had, you know, plus size women as my dancers, then I would have looked better. And that's what's wrong. Like that one was that missed a lot of marks. There's no redeeming that one. No, nope. so I have nothing to say to help that. That was just wrong. Yep. So obviously within seconds of posting, people were calling her out saying that her words were fat phobic, inappropriate, harmful, dangerous, disgusting. She lost a ton of followers and many, many people called her out on how harmful this whole sentiment was to, you know, people with eating disorders or like even just teens in general. Yeah. Like she has so many young adult followers that like they're in their prime of like, uh, not insulting, what's uh, criticizing their bodies. Yes. And so for someone who, you know, Brittany is is fit. So for someone to sit there and like be like, oh, I, I wish I was I looked skinnier or whatever. And then and then to make fat phobic comments. It's like so not cool. Nope. Yeah. And then it was reported that allegedly I could not confirm this. I tried to look into it. Couldn't confirm. Allegedly, Christina herself unfollowed Brittany on Instagram. Um, That's a move. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Yeah. She just insulted her dancers. Right. So after all the backlash, Brittany, who still hasn't taken down the post, decided to hop onto Instagram and defend herself. Why wouldn't she? So she said, by no means was I being critical of Christina's beautiful body. You were talking about the dancers. The dancers. It it is what it is. I hate that phrase. I flew to see her show once, and the main thing I noticed was the difference of our people on stage. By no means did I even mention Christina. Look at my post. I was inspired by her show. She was a beautiful woman of power. Thank you, Extina, you know, Instagram handle, for inspiring me. To get less fit dancers i guess she went on to say but that's not why people were mad she's missing the mark miss just yep. continuing to miss it. she got okay yep she said to be honest i'm not trying to be critical of anybody okay no. what i posted is a projection of the insecurities i deal with all the time as a result of how my parents and media have treated me i would okay, have that's never- a valid that could she could have just been like i'm so sorry take Set it down that. yep take down the last post be like, I'm sorry. This is why I thought this. I'm still working on it. Right. Okay. But no. I should be a PR person. You really <laughs> should. I would have never intentionally body shamed anyone because I know what it's like. I struggle with this because how I feel about myself, not because I hate how anybody looks. So really no accountability. Didn't take it down. Nope. Just nope. doing her thing. That's nope. Wrong. Do, wrong. Okay. Next. No, no, no. No, no. Wait. Before we move on, are we done with that one? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm going to check to see if we have a sponsor for today. Sponsor. Sponsor. Sometimes when a problem arises, people get stuck in the problem instead of switching to a problem-solving mode. It's obviously healthy to have our feelings, but there comes a time when you have to step back and think about things logically, and therapy can help you switch to that problem-solving mode. I've been in therapy for years now, and my therapist has given me so many tools to help me solve problems when I'm overwhelmed with emotions. Emotions be strong, y'all. They'll get you. Therapy can also help you unload stress, help with emotional healing, anxiety, depression, and so, so, so much more. There are so many benefits to therapy. So if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, 
BetterHelp is a great option. It's convenient, accessible, affordable, and entirely online. You can get matched with a therapist after filling out a brief survey, and you can switch therapists at any time until you find the one that vibes with you. So when you want to become a problem solver, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash all things internet today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash all things internet the name of the show and we're back all right a huge story that came out this week was that ray j is claiming that allegedly chris jenner was the one that concocted the sorry snoop is pressing on my tummy it was the one that concocted the whole release of kim and ray j's sex tapes to the public i thought we already knew that no they've been blaming him and saying that he was the one that released them this like he they were making him the villain the whole time wait i thought we already knew that though i thought we all were like chris planned it i thought we knew this as a group no we as, didn't. A, as a society as a to, okay group project oh i was in my own world doing a solo thing well, okay maybe i missed that but like this was, i just thought it was like we just kind of knew because it's uh, chris jenner i don't know because like i think there's a difference between like releasing stuff like Kylie's pregnant and stuff like that and then releasing a literal sex tape of your daughter well yeah obviously it was a really big thing yeah but I mean what mom would do that Chris Jenner allegedly um, like allegedly so Snoop hair yeah Snoop hair everywhere so Chris Jenner recently appeared on the James Corden talk show and she took a lie detector test and she was asked if she had anything to do with the infamous sex tapes. And she said no. And the polygraph expert claimed that she was telling the truth. Well, apparently, Ray J was not very happy with this. So he decided to take to Instagram. And he posted a 20-minute long video maintaining that Chris was the mastermind behind the tapes. And that Ray J even claimed that there were multiple different sex tapes that Chris sorted through and picked the best one because it gave Kim a better look than the others. He said on his Instagram, I was just going to handle this shit legally. Sorry. <clears throat> I was just going to handle this stuff legally, right? And just hit you in court and just get what I deserve from you all for being foul and trying to defame me, trying to make me look bad when you know what's up. I don't know what the F you think this is, but you have messed with the wrong person. And he basically used the video to talk about how he's done being the bad guy, how he's done with partners, like not trusting him because of this, because yeah. they painted him out to be this bad guy. Yeah. Um, and that it's time that the truth come out. And of course, what good is a person's words without receipts? Obviously, bring them receipts. Because I'm nosy. I have no right, but I want to know. Yep. So Ray J shared old texts between him and Kanye where the two of them discussed the tapes and the contract between him and the Kardashians. So that was kind of like, the nail in the coffin Ooh. is Kanye, e not emailed, he texted him and he said, yo, it's yay. I spoke to Wack. I don't know who that is. And he said, you still have some tapes. I need to get those back and the contracts and give them to my wife. Can we hop on to facilitate this? So if there's a contract, that, that means, means that, there, yeah. there was some negotiation and, yes. and planning. There was obvious planning. Bye, Snoop. Snoop left. Bye, Snoop. Um, his hair, hair is still left here, though. Yeah. Um, so he alleges that Kim and Chris signed his name for him on the contract um, and that Kanye was trying to get the remaining sex tapes back. And uh, then he pulled up messages between him and Kim from her verified account. So he showed this in the video. He like went to her verified account and then went to message and then pulled up the messages. So it's not faked. And he, and he messaged her saying, you know what we did? Your mom controlled this whole sex tape deal with Joe Francis and Steve Hirsch. It was her idea to put the tape out with Vivid, which is a production company. All I did was agree. Now you make it seem like I'm doing it without your control. And then his like thumb is like blocking the rest of the message. And Kim responded by saying, it's not a big deal. She, <laughs> she didn't, she didn't deny the contract. She didn't deny that. Like, he was basically saying your mom brokered this whole thing. Didn't yeah. deny it. She was basically saying it's really not that big of a deal. Because he was also mad because one of the episodes that came out, like, with the new show. Mm -hmm. I think it was the first one. Do you watch that show? No. Okay. In the very first episode, one of Kim's kids runs up to her with his iPad and on Roblox, which is like a gaming app. There, It's like games within a gaming app. There was a game that was labeled Kim Kardashian sex tape. And he was, but he couldn't read yet. All he saw was his mom's face on the front of the app. And he was like, look, mommy, you have an app. And then she read it. And so the like 
half of the episode is dedicated to like her being sad and them talking to lawyers and them like not exactly like bad mouthing Ray J, but like not yeah. making him look great. And so that really upset him. So she said, it's not a big deal. We didn't say anything bad about you in the episode. She basically was saying they need to be mature. They need to move on. And that in the next episode of the Kardashians that was going to air, he was painted in a positive life, light, light, but never denied the accusations that Chris wow. did the whole thing. So it's pretty much like it's been confirmed. I mean, I thought this was public knowledge. I had no idea. I thought he was just like a sleaze this entire time. I never thought that. Really? No. Oh, my God. I literally never heard that he was the one that did it or whatever. I know that sex tapes were leaked. And then, like, I saw jokes on the internet being like, Chris Jenner did it. And I was like, yeah, that kind of tracks. Oh, my God. I must. I missed that. Where was I? I don't know. Where was I? Welcome to this episode where Rachel knows more than Emily. <laughs> First time ever. And this is the only time it'll ever happen. Take it in. Soak it in. Soak it. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, do we need to check again? No, we just... Wasn't that like five minutes ago? I don't know. Some, the, my conception of time when we're doing this podcast is... It doesn't exist? doesn't exist. Oh, I'm pretty good at it. Okay. All right. Um, all right. The cutest trend is going around TikTok right now. Oh, we're switching stories. That was the end. Goodbye. Next. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the cutest trend is going around TikTok right now where parents are filming their black daughters reacting to, to the... Tra- Ariel. Yeah, yeah. To the trailer of The Little Mermaid. So over the weekend, Disney released the first official trailer to their upcoming live action remake of The Little Mermaid, Uh in which case um, Holly Bailey, not to be confused with Halle Halle Berry, um, plays Ariel. And she's a young black woman who was chosen for the role despite many, 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 many racists coming forward and saying, no, 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 Ariel's supposed to be white. Disney said, mm, no, thank you, and cast her, which was incredible. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, so they, Disney decided to proceed with the decision, um, and it's... The she pa- looks like a mermaid. Oh, yeah. When I saw a picture, I was like, that's a mermaid. Oh, yeah. I don't know why, because I don't know what mermaids are, and they're not even real. But I went, she looks like a mermaid. I yeah. can see a fish <laughs> on her. She plays the role. Like, from what I've seen, she plays the role really well. Yeah. So parents on TikTok have started posting their children's genuine reactions to discovering that their favorite Disney princess looks like them. Yeah. Because obviously it's like super important that children from all backgrounds see people positively portrayed in the media. Yes. Who look like them. Yes. And this is so I don't think people understand how rare this is. Yeah. Like Black Panther was kind of the first groundbreaking movie of our generation where they were solely focusing on the black community and yes. portraying them as the heroes and the main characters and like yeah and that was so important and for, not just sidekicks yes and now and now disney's you know stepped forward and they're doing this as well and so it's just like literally i was like sobbing watching these videos i have a question is everyone else like her family also black i don't know it was it I have no I haven't watched it at all it was such I didn't a know short if it was, okay yeah trailer um I'm sure I could look up cast of Little Mermaid but I wouldn't want to get yelled at so <laughs> watch out now watch out Emily Emily I can't believe you <sighs> her dad was played by how dare you not be in the casting room oh my god Anyway, um, so like a few of the videos, one little girl sat up like because these parents are just putting on the trailer and like secretly recording their kids because they know, but the kids don't know. Um, And so one little girl sat up super quickly after Bailey appeared on the screen and she said, Mommy, I think she's brown. Ariel is cute as brown and was like had like the biggest smile on her face. And then another video, it was two sisters. And like as soon as Bailey pops up on the screen, their like mouths dropped open. And they started yelling, um, where was it? I don't know. I didn't write it. This. Oh, oh, oh. She, sorry, I lost my place. Um, they started like jumping up and down and screaming like, she's black. Yay. Like, it's just like all these kids are like so excited to finally see someone that's so important. Yeah. That looks like them. Yeah. And a princess. Yeah. She's a princess. I saw a meme where it was like, um, all of these, uh, people of different eth- um, ethnicities and cultures um in movies being played by white people and like mm. everyone's silent and then one oh, yeah. fictional character that's a cartoon is played by a, a black girl and everyone's it, not everyone all the racists are enraged yeah. i'm like what you guys don't care she's it's a mermaid it's a mermaid she's a fish. There, did you hear those scientists that came up and said that um fish that live deeper Do- in the sea are actually darker colors so yeah. the mermaids are actually be black yeah <laughs> they're like suck it <laughs> yeah all right before you move on, I'm going to check to see if we have 
another sponsor for today. Sponsor. Sponsor. This episode is brought to you by the dating app Hinge. To help our community navigate the complicated world of LGBTQIA plus dating, Hinge is bringing you not so frequently asked questions. It's answers to queer questions not talked about enough. It's a new resource to help you navigate the less straightforward areas of dating. You can even submit your own NFAQ through the website. To learn more and hear different perspectives on these not so frequently asked questions, go to hinge.nfaq.co. That's hinge.nfaq.co. And we're back. All right, so there were a ton of awkward moments that happened at the Emmys this year. Oh, what is this whole thing Harry Styles spit on somebody? I don't know what that was at. It, at one point. Okay, have you noticed the last two weeks, everyone's trying to like drag Harry Styles through the mud? Ever since they, they, they like, were like, are you queer baiting? Since then, everyone's been trying to like rag on Harry Styles. It did look like he spat on him. I didn't see anything. But I'm saying the last two weeks, yeah. the, I've never seen anything negative about Harry Styles. No. Years and years. Because he's precious. He's a little one little direction boy, yeah. right? To now. Two weeks ago, all of a sudden, I've yeah. just only seen negative things about him. And I'm like, what's going on here? It's because he's about to star in a movie that has had a very controversial background. Okay. At some point, maybe next episode, because we have had a lot of people asking us to talk about it. It's just there are so many factors that go into it. Okay. It's going to take me ages. Okay. And it's like, it's very niche. So I don't know if that many people care about it. But people care about Harry Styles. Long story short, Olivia Wilde, who is supposedly dating Harry Styles. Yeah. Created this movie and it's called Something Darling. Um, yeah. And it was originally starring, I want to say Florence Pugh and Shia LaBeouf and a uh, allegedly Shia LaBeouf was being very aggressive on set and so uh, Olivia said she fired him because he was being so aggressive Shia LaBeouf came forward and said you didn't fire me I quit because you were being high maintenance and came with receipts and then there was some huge drama going on between Florence Pugh and Olivia Wilde and then she replaced Shia LaBeouf with Harry Styles and then at the awards show it really did look like he spit on him. Both of them came forward and said no one spit on anyone. But like, it, I watched it so many times and I was like, I yeah, see it. yeah, he spat on him. Like, I, mean, I think he's smarter, smarter th than to spit on someone in front of a camera. I don't know. I mean, how many times have we seen at award shows where celebrities are making certain faces or doing certain things and they didn't know a camera was on them? OK, yeah. You know, they both came forward and said that it wasn't a spit. But like it sure did look like it. So there's just it's just a lot of background, a lot of drama. But that's the gist of it. OK. So I, I think that's why people are like he's coming up a lot more is because he's in this controversial movie that has this controversial background. And there's just all these unanswered questions. And I don't know. All right. OK. Anyway, the Emmys. Awkward moments. Yeah. Continue. All right. So Keenan introduced Oprah as the queen of all thrones in the same week that Elizabeth II. Elizabeth yep. OK. There we go. Yep. And then he also made a joke later in the night about Zendaya and Leon Leonardo DiCaprio. You know the whole running joke that Leo won't date anyone over the age of 25? Yeah. Yeah. So he said, Zendaya just turned 26 last week. Happy birthday. 26 is a weird age in Hollywood. You're young enough to play a high school student, but you're too old to date Leo. And it was just very awkward for everyone. Um, and then Jennifer Coolidge, you know, I love her. Oh, I was going to say, yeah. I know that one. I want a hot I'm, dog real yeah. bad. I want a hot dog real bad. Yeah. She, um, she said this when she won her first Emmy, she got up on stage and she was like looking a little uncomfortable. And she said, I took a lavender bath and it made me swell up inside my dress. I'm having a hard time speaking. So then the producers didn't quite know what to do so they just started trying to rush her off the stage by playing the emmy music you know you're only oh, allowed yeah, to yeah, yeah. talk until the music starts she didn't want to get off stage yet because she hadn't had time to thank anyone yeah so she didn't leave and just started dancing and it was just very awkward what yeah all right and then um jimmy kimmel uh, was, I saw this. Yeah. What are you doing? He knows better. Yeah. He knows better. He was doing a bit um, with, you know, the co-host of the announcing of the award. He was doing a bit about being drunk and losing. And so at one point he like collapsed fun, fun, funnily. That's not a word. Yeah. To be funny, he collapsed on the floor and pretended to be passed out. 
but then didn't get up and leave when Quinta Brunson won her Emmy. And this was like history in the making for her to win this. And he was just laying there on the floor next to her while she was like, like I'm, I'm talking touching her feet. Yeah, next I to saw her. that. And it's not a good look. It's not. So, um, yeah, he's been accused of taking away the spotlight from her yeah. in true white man fashion. Um, and this is a good, big moment for her. It was huge. And he was just laying there pretending to be passed out. Like you could have. Yeah. Get up and leave. Get like that's leave. not your moment. No. So, I mean, she was a really good sport about it. She took her phone out of her, like, pocket or her hand or something and placed it on top of him and was like, here, hold this, like, trying to, like, keep keep the joke going because, like, that's awkward. Like, you can't go up there and ignore him because then people are going to, like, make comments about that. But, but yeah, she did say afterwards, um, she was saying she doesn't know if she's mad at him yet or not. She was like... She will be. Yeah, she said, I don't know. I know Jimmy Kimmel, and I felt like the bit didn't bother me that much. I don't know what the internet thinks. Jimmy gave me my first late night spot and was one of the first people to see Abbott. I think that in the moment, I was really happy that Jimmy was up there. I kind of consider him one of the comedy godfathers, and I'm a huge fan of Will Arnett, who was the other person that was up there. So I was wrapped up in the moment. I don't know. Tomorrow, maybe I'll be mad at him. I'm going to be on his show on Wednesday, so I might punch him in the face. We'll see what happens. <laughs> so she was a very She's good. She's handling that well. She was very good. Because she, she has this very fine line to walk where she like. She needs to recognize that there is this white man up there taking the spotlight yeah. away from her, which is like. Oh, my God, it just happens again and again yeah. and again. So it's like she needs to recognize that, which she is. But yeah. at the same time, like. If she makes negative comments, everyone's going to be like, oh, blah, 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 yeah. you know, and attack her. So she's she's handling this very well. She's like, let me talk to my PR team first. Uh, yes. Um, so, yeah, some tweets I saw. Someone said white male privilege is lying on the ground and expecting a black woman to just step around you while she accepts her hard earned award. Yeah. Can someone tell the human personification of white male privilege that is Jimmy Kimmel that he is not entitled to take up all the space, especially when that space belongs to Quinta Brunson? who had literally navigated around him to accept her historic Emmy. So people are not happy with him. No. Yeah. No. Well, that sucks. That sucks. Yeah. Um, He did make a statement. He said, I had my eyes closed. I had no idea where I was. What? It was one of the weirdest things that's ever happened to me. She's so unbelievable, unbelievably talented. And I saw her pilot before it came out on ABC. And I wrote to her and I was like, I don't know how we got this, but congratulations. You made a pilot that a network would be ecstatic to get. She's a lovely person as well. So again, where's the accountability? Where's the apology? I like, didn't know where I was. Was he actually drunk? I don't know. He just said, I had my eyes closed and I had no idea where I was. Maybe he'll address it on Wednesday when he does what the interview with her. That's weird. That's really weird. Especially for him. Like He's a decent guy that calls people out for this type of behavior. Yeah, that's really weird. So maybe he'll make a, a a better statement when they're in person again. Yeah. Yeah. So All right. Well, there you go. Yeah. Um We we got time for things. Oh, okay, good. You really have no No. Okay. We need like a digital timer that I can watch. Well, I it's right here. It's I can't see the, that far. You need better contacts. Yes, I do. <laughs> Um, okay, so we talked a little bit last week about how the iPhone 14 yeah. was coming. It's like the iPhone 76 at this point is coming out. <laughs> oh my God. Um, and then they also have a new update coming out that I'm pretty sure anyone can download as long as you update your phone. And some of the really cool things that we didn't mention before is you can customize multiple lock screens and switch between them. Like you can swipe between them, oh. which is pretty cool. So you can change your lock screen like okay. from the lock position. Um, you can also finally change the font and color of text. Finally. Right? I have been wanting this for ages. <laughs> it's all I've ever needed. I what? Okay. <laughs> you can now set the battery percentage to display on the battery indicator. So it's not just a color anymore or like a bar. You can, it will say like 76% on it. Like, Wait, don't I have it next to it? Usually when it's charging, it'll do that. Oh yeah. You have to swipe down yeah. and it will show you. I so now okay. Apple has saved you a swipe. Um, <laughs> that was already there. They took away our swipe and then added it back. They're like, aren't we geniuses? You're welcome. Applaud us. Buy our new phone for thousands of dollars. Yeah. Even though there's nothing wrong with yours, but we'll make something wrong with yours. Precisely. Um, your hit- I can't get comfortable. My back hurts. I feel like an old person. Is it because my foot is no. right behind you? I didn't even know that. Oh, I just cracked it. 
It's because I couldn't sleep. And then like, yeah. my body didn't get its rest. Oh, I'm stretchy. Go. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> your hidden <sighs> and recently deleted photo albums can now be locked and require face ID. Thank you. That's an update Not we actually wanted. I have that on my phone at all. But thank you. Why? Because I was like, great, I can hide photos. Not that I need to or I do that. Uh, but I'm like, anyone could just go to hidden photos. Yeah. That made no sense to me. Yeah. I can lock notes. Right. But I can't lock photos. Right. Of your dogs. Of just my dogs. Yeah. There are no other things. No other things whatsoever. Nope. Okay. Yep. Um, if you- This is on the new phone or the update? The update. Thank God. Yep. If you Not long- <laughs> Like, if you long right. press one of your photos, if you hold your thumb down on one of your photos, iOS will automatically cut out the subject of that photo and then you can drag and drop it like a copy and paste. So if you took a picture of Snoop. Wait, I thought when you hold it down, it's a live photo. It starts playing. This is saying if you I think it has to be like a not live photo, I'm assuming. Yeah. Now I have to d- debate between putting live or not live. I don't actually on. know. I, it just says if you hold right. your phone down, drag and drop. All right. So you can like make a little sticker out of the subject of your photo. That's cute. Um, you can now long press a text message in iMessage and edit it after it's been sent. This is dangerous. This is really dangerous for how long after it's sent. Didn't say yet. Because if it's like forever, then receipts no longer matter. Yeah. There are, then receipts can be, unless you can see that someone else has edited it and see the original. Maybe it'll flag it, like Yeah, edited. being like edited and yeah. then you can hit see original. Oh, that would be good. That would, that would be good. That would Take be, notes, Apple. Listen, I'm smart. I have been saying you need to lock your hidden photos forever. Yeah. And like, because yeah, there is a thing, you know, because like people were saying on like Facebook or whatever, if you edit something, or I don't remember if it was Instagram or Facebook. It's comments. It, oh, it's comments. And it'll say edited. Yeah, edited. Mm-hmm. And that way you know yeah. what someone's actually said yeah. versus what they say now. Right. Um, but like spelling mistakes and stuff, like it would be yeah. nice if I could just go and click like, and fix it. You can't just make fun of me for that. I'm like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can also long press a conversation and mark it as unread. So like, you know how sometimes you'll open a message when you're doing something and then you'll forget to respond to it. That's what I've also said all. So, <laughs> higher I wish like, on emails I could make my text messages unread because my manager or you will text me something and I'll be like I- I'm like don't forget this and I'm like well I'm gonna forget because right. I've read this and I've put my phone down so if I can make the t- message uh-huh. unread yeah then I could be like all oh, right I have that it's a little notification I right. have to do that thing right hire her Apple I can tell you all my problems and then you fix them yeah um, the translate app can now translate texts like as oh. in images, which is really cool. Um, and then you can now copy all the edits you make on a photo and paste those edits onto other photos. I love that. I don't do anything like that. So that's cool for you, though. <sighs> do you know how many times I sit there and I'm like, all right, brightness at seven, contrast negative six. And then I have to like either put it in my notes app so that I can remember to do it to the other photos or I have to like write it down on a piece of paper. Because if you're posting like a swipey series where you're in the same position in the same place. Oh, I like, just edit on Instagram because you can put them all in the same filter at the same time. Well, I don't like filters. I like doing like the <laughs> individual <laughs> editing. I don't have the patience to sit there and do that. That's why yeah. I don't ever do it. Like I've said before, you have nothing to prove to people. <laughs> I have to step up my Instagram game. We need good lighting, people. Uh, okay. Continue. Yes. All right. Are you ready for your positive moments? Please. All right. An Amazon delivery driver saved a family from their burning home. Oh, my God. Yeah. So Kevin Rivera was finishing up a delivery when he noticed that a house across the street was smoking and he saw flames in the window. Like, I'm assuming upstairs. Okay. Um, And when he didn't see the family escaping to the outside, he decided to rush in to see if he could help. So he walked through the unlocked front door and he was surprised to see all six family members, including a baby, kind of just sitting there. They had no idea that their house, like, that's why I'm saying I assume it's upstairs. Yeah. They had no idea that their house was on fire. So he got them all outside. Well, it could have been a laundry room in the other side of the house or something. Could be, yeah. It was away from them. Yeah. Um, And despite a language barrier, neither one of the parties could understand each other. He got them all outside to safety, and then the fire trucks arrived a few minutes later. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Right? Yeah. Um, And then this one was really cool. I had read about this woman before, but they're turning it into something really cool. So, um, um, according to Good News Network, love that website. In Scotland, there's a woman who can smell changes in body odor and 
with this certain smell. What? She knows that the person has Parkinson's. Right? What? It has been scientifically. I thought it was BS when I first read about it. It has been like. How did she discover this? Because her husband started smelling different and he didn't change his cologne. He didn't change his diet. Nothing changed about him. But she noticed this very strong smell on him, but no one else could smell it. And then about seven months later, he got diagnosed with Parkinson's. So she basically like ran it by the doctor and was like, hey, tell me I'm not cuckoo nuts. Like, is this a possibility? And the doctor was like, eh sent her off to some college professor that studies this kind of stuff. Yeah. They put her into a study. Um, and basically they brought her in like a very neutral, sanitized room. They brought her T-shirts. And it was like they brought her over like 50 T-shirts, but only 12 of them were worn by people that were diagnosed with Parkinson's. And she got 13 T-shirts. So there were only 12 of people that were diagnosed. And she, and she labeled 13. So all 12 of them were correct. And then she picked out a 13th. And so they're like, that's still really good odds. Yeah. A year later, that 13th per- person got diagnosed with Parkinson's. Stop. Mm-hmm. No, they didn't. Yep. I mean, that's really sad for them. But what is this superpower? Right? right? This is like, this is the most cuckoo what? thing. Yeah. So she. Oh, that must suck for her, though, to like walk I past know. someone and smell that. that, that and she's like, they don't know. I know. Well, is there anything like early diagnosis helps? Yeah. So there. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. This, I'm is, into this. this is the cool part. So um, basically, they figured out, thanks to her special talent, that the reason she can do this is because, wait for it. Her notes are long. My notes are long. Is because um, they've realized that s- sebum, uh, am I, I, don't I don't know, know if I'm pronouncing is. that correctly. I don't know what anything is. But wait for I'm it. I'm still trying to figure out who I am. <laughs> okay, okay, okay um oh my god i need to still have a struggle spelling the word restaurant indefinitely yes okay okay so they're basically sorry i wasn't i wasn't 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 listening no she'll listen this back (laughs) when she edits this um so they have figured out that when you have okay here we go so they have figured out that took you so literally i wish you could i wish if you want to see that is so much when i did this show with my mom my notes were like this person did this this person did this end of it uh, you're welcome <laughs> um yeah so they believe the reason that she could smell parkinson's was because parkinson parkinson's causes damage to um a kind of skin oil known as sebum and so they think she can smell the damage to that oil so she can basically smell the oil going bad on oh, someone they're like rotten I don't know. She, I, I haven't read how she describes it. Okay. But she just says she can smell it. So basically they took her talents, um, thanks to her discovering this and mm-hmm. sharing it with the world. And they figured out that, you know, she can smell it because of the oil changing. And so if they, they're trying to develop, they're very close. If they take a cotton ball and they swipe it on the back of someone's neck and then test for this oil and to see if it's damaged. Yeah. <clears throat> they can early detect Parkinson's. If you early detect it, what is to de- detect it? Does that help at all? You can't. There's no like cure. I don't want to be wrong. As far as my knowledge, there's no cure for Parkinson's. They're working on it. But I think that they did say in the article, the earlier that you detected, the more that you can manage Pro- the symptoms. And prolong it. I, I think, maybe. yeah. In my opinion. In my allegedly. opinion, yeah. Allegedly, allegedly, alleged, allegedly. Oh, I did research it. Oh, yeah. Take that, comments. Take that. There are no cures for Parkinson's. I'm so sorry. That's not something to celebrate. It's not. It's not. We, yes. That's sad. Yes. So there are no cures for Parkinson's, but a confirmatory diagnosis would allow them to get the right treatment and the right drugs to alleviate their symptoms. So this is progress. I'm loving this lady with Isn't her that, nose. Isn't like wild? That's you can, so wild. Because like I've always heard of dogs being able to like smell cancer on people. Or you are like, cats knowing people, someone's about to die. Yeah, that one. Yeah, that kind of stuff. But like to be able to walk by someone and smell if they have a disease. Like that's, 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 that's unheard of. Right. That's a superpower. And they've turned it into a medical Give this woman like, all the money in the world. Right. Cool, cool, cool. So, all right. And then last positive story. Um, the founder of Patagonia, the clothing company. I heard this story. I know this story. You want to go? No. Okay. Um, the founder. He gave away. Here, I'll try. Um, 
founder of the Patagonias. Um, he decided to fight climate change by giving away his company. So all of the proceeds and whatnot the company makes goes, so, which is like 150 million a year or something like that. When his company's worth billions, three billion, yeah, three billion. Um, every that all of that will go to fight climate change. Mm-hmm. There it is. Yep. Yeah, and he's someone that actually is like super down to earth. He lives very minimal. Yeah. He only has, he has like two houses, one in Southern California, one in Jacksonville, oh. and uh, Wyoming. Yes. And then uh, I thought Jacksonville was Florida. No, Jacks. No, it's something. It's like the really rich area of Wyoming. Oh, okay. I I I might be saying it wrong again. I don't know anything. She claims no research. I claim no <laughs> research or fact checking here. I this is a story I heard yesterday. <laughs> so um yeah, and his two kids uh work for the company, but they're not taking. They're just working um their wage. Now they're not going to like take oh. extra like from the stocks or whatever. Okay. So they're just working their wage. Obviously they're set up and they're already rich. Yeah. But they're like, okay, we're, we're done earning money. Yeah. And anything. And they put it into a trust, which means the company is now in a trust, which means they don't get any tax breaks. So they're paying oh. like $71 million a year in taxes. Yeah. I mean, knowing numbers. So, uh, so yeah, cause a lot of billionaire companies all put it in a, like a foundation or a charity or whatever. So they don't have to pay taxes, oh. but now they're like, no, we're putting it into a trust, which also makes it that an evil person, if they'd like randomly take over the company, they can't Ooh. decide to be an evil person and take all the money for themselves. I love that. Yeah. That's what I have. What do you have? Uh, no, you nailed it. Okay, great. Yeah. So they're, they're giving, um, yeah, all of the, they've changed the company over to this non-profit i want to say and it's to combat climate change and to protect undeveloped land around the globe yep so yeah you know how we always say all billionaires are evil this one's not he gets a pass had a gooch until we hear otherwise he gets a pass he gets a pass yeah. thank you for being the exception to my rule yeah there's always one there's always one um i'm proud to own a patagonia <laughs> isn't it like gay apparel like isn't that considered like is it now? You don't think so? All my friends and the majority of them are straight on a Patagonia. Interesting. Yeah. What would you say is like if you saw someone wearing like a certain brand? Carhartt. That's what I said too. Lesbians. Lesbian. Oh yeah, lesbians. There's yeah. difference. Between you're either country, a fisher, a farmer, or a lesbian. If you're wearing Carhartt. <laughs> yep. There you go. <laughs> um. All right. That's actually all the time we have for today. No question. No question. All we're right. we're at the. You got to edit this today. So you got. Do. You got. You're. You know. Yeah. You got your work cut out for you. <laughs> All right. Uh, I love you guys. Thank you for listening and watching. Please follow us on whatever platform you're listening or watching this on, which would be YouTube if you're watching. Anyway, uh, follow us on Instagram. I love you guys. You're wonderful, beautiful. Thank you for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of All Things Internet. Please make sure to like and follow our podcast on whichever platform you're currently listening to it on. And make sure to follow us at Podcast ATI on Twitter, where you can ask questions and get the latest updates on our show. We love you. Thanks for listening. I'm Rachel Ballinger, and this has been All Things Internet.